Hi, this is Paul from FinishYourSong.com and got a video for you here looking at programming drums in Cubase and how to configure Cubase to work best with VST drum instruments like the Easy Drummer that we've got on screen in front of us. One of the things with drums when you're working with MIDI is that you end up with random notes. And what we've got here is across the top of the screen we've got some of the indie folk drum parts and if we just have a listen to the drum part here, uh, we'll see what we've got. Okay, so that's fairly Tom-centric in its uh, approach to rhythm. So let's close that down and just open up and have a look at what we've got. What we've got is a series of dots. A lot of C1s, a few G1s, a couple of others scattered about the place. Not really very intuitive when it comes to looking at how the drums are arranged. And it would be difficult to program intuitively using this kind of setup. Easy Drummer, uh, like Native Instruments Session Drums, comes with a helpful keyboard map that shows you where all the notes are. Um, for any Easy Drummer product that you install, you'll find a map like this in your installation folder. And it shows us where the range of the notes is over the keyboard. We just rotate it back to its original view. Yeah. And we can see that each drum note has a voice assigned to it. And where there are gaps, what tune tracks tend to do is repeat the note. So crash A primarily is down here. You can also get crash A up here on these notes. So pretty much if you have a keyboard plugged in and you hit a key, you'll get a sound. And not surprisingly, it does follow the basic general MIDI pattern, um, which is what you would expect. You don't always get it with some manufacturers, but you do get it with tune track. They follow the basic general MIDI layout, kick on C1, snare on D1, hi-hats on the three keys here. But it's all very counterintuitive. You have to have your little bit of paper by your side and you have to try and work out what's what. Well, Cubase is a way of getting Cubase to show us what's what and it sits here. Cubase has a facility called Drum Maps. It's been in Cubase since Cubase 2.0 on the Atari. What this enables you to do is to replace the grid editor, key editor rather, that you see here, with a grid that has the names of the individual drums on it, which is much more intuitive and also enables you to come up with a much better working layout than jumping up and down over two, three, four, or even in some cases seven key octaves on the keyboard. So what you do to create a drum map is you go into drum map setup. Here you'll see we've already got a drum map loaded for a different kit, but we want a new map. And what it does is it brings up this empty map I'm going to save our empty map as EZX Indie Folk. So for the moment we have an empty map. What you can now do is go in and if we flip back to our sounds, you can we'll start down here at a0, that C0 is open one, so this is A minus one, with the closed pedal. Minus one, closed pedal. And you tap the down arrow on the keyboard, you can then Without hitting enter, scroll through and type in 
all the notes. Referring to your map, which I printed out and got at the side of me, which is how I know it's what. So I'll just do this. And fill it in, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so there we are. I've just typed them all in, and they're all there. All the different articulations available in this particular Easy Drummer sound set. Problem is, they're scattered all over the place. But using a drum map, you can easily solve that. You simply click on the drum you want to move and drag it. Now, for the purposes of programming and reading drum maps, I like to have the kick at the top, then the snare, then the hi-hats, then the toms, then the cymbals, and then any other percussion. So I'm just going to click and drag until I end up with that arrangement. So there's the, there's the snare. And we had the side stick and the rim shot. And I'll just click and drag and reorganize until we've got everything sorted out. Back in a minute. OK, so now I've reordered them. So coming down the list, we have kick drum, snare, the snare articulations, hi-hats, the varying opens, pedals, closed, all the different articulations there, then the rack tom, the floor tom, the crash cymbals A, B, ride cymbal, and right at the bottom, the tambourine. It's a way that works for me. It's a way in a sequence that I've used for years. So functions we now save as Indie Folk. Yes, I want to replace Indie Folk. Functions remove, functions load. It's a bit counterintuitive getting this to work. And there we have our empty map, as it calls it. Indie Folk. That's what you have to do with that. Functions save. Indie folk. It's not the most intuitive system. And there you have it. So we close that, we go back, and not a lot has changed here, but what we do now have is an Indie folk map. So I click on that, see that all of a sudden our dashes in the MIDI maps are being replaced by little diamonds. And if we open that up, we can now see that this pattern here is kick, snare, floor tom, and not a lot else. And in this particular case, we can see all of the articulations in the screen. For an Easy X or for a drum map from any other manufacturer, you might find that the map is correspondingly long. This also enables us to highlight the individual voices and work with them. As I click on each line, you'll see that the velocity values for that line alone are shown at the bottom, rather than the velocity values for all of the notes on any particular beat, which makes it much easier to work with refining the velocity values of individual notes within a kit. Before we finish, one last thing I want to show you. It's all right having all these multiplicity of articulations, but what you don't want to be doing is dancing around when you're actually programming. So what I tend to do is if I go into drum map setup, what I tend to do is arrange the general MIDI notes all together. So I'll come down, I've got my hi-hats there, I've got back tom, floor tom, crash cymbal, crash cymbal, edge, 
and tambourine. And we'll pull out the snare rim. And the rim shot. And we need one of them there. What you've got now is the essential voices in the kit all available to you. And we'll save that as Indie Folk. Light. And that will then be a voice when you come to edit you'll find that all the voices you want to edit are at the top of the screen rather than being scattered about, but all the other voices are available to you if you want to start editing them. That was a very brief introduction to drum maps and in future videos we'll have a look at some other uses that you can make of them. Until then, take care of yourselves. <laughs>